Hello. Beep beep. How you doing? Right. Become a warrior teacher. Share this and like it. It's the like that helps the algorithm, the share that really boosts it. So if you can share it and like it and subscribe, that'd be great. If you want to become a jester, right, you can do. If not, come and join us on the Winning Mindset in May. Of course, we're trying to grow the team. So, you know, I know it's hard. We're still at it, but we're growing the team. So please do come and join us if you wish to. Links are in the dubers as usual, along with the link to the article for the day, which once again, we are going to uh, talk about Scotland. How you doing up there, up north? How you doing? What does the Scottish Hate Crime and Public Order Act really say? This is from the excellent Michael Foran, who you may or may not be familiar with. Misunderstandings are the fault of Police Scotland and government ministers. This week, this is an artillery row, by the way, on the critic. This week, the Hate Crime and Public Order Scotland Act 2021 came into force. It's not normal for legislation to take this long to come into effect, but this is not ordinary legislation. It has been plagued by controversy since it was proposed, and that controversy has come to a head this week as high-profile people such as J.K. Rowling have publicly dared the police to arrest them under the Act. It was brilliant, wasn't it? If any woman gets arrested, let me know what it was she said, said J.K. I will say the exact same thing, and they can prosecute us both at the same time. Uh, Just utter genius. God, you are. (laughs) <laughs> they don't like it up on. now misinformation and misunderstanding have surrounded this new law so what does it actually do and why are so many forcefully dissenting from it the act has two distinct strands okay it's a good explanation coming folks aggravations and stirring up offenses so aggravations are not crimes in their own right okay get that They apply only when someone does something which is already a crime, such as an assault or a murder. And in doing so, they demonstrate or are motivated by malice or ill will towards a protected characteristic such as race or sexual orientation. So I'm coming out of the fish and chip shop and I'm passing by, you know, KFC on my way home. Somebody hits me over the back of the head with a drumstick and knocks me to the floor. I'm quite doddery, right? Knocks me to the floor and then shouts, raging puff. That would be an aggravator, right? So if you hit by a drumstick and somebody calls you a puff there, that would break this law. <laughs> Aggravated. So you need the offence for the aggravation of a hate crime to be added, which I don't think should be possible. They all need to go. You hit somebody over there with a piece of chicken, don't matter who that person is, you should definitely get done for it. I think. You should have to work in a poultry factory for 10 years. Mind you, if somebody hits you on the back of the head, it's only a poultry crime, isn't it? What? I'm stopping. I'm stopping. Okay, I'm carrying on. Right, okay. Now, so you've got the original crime. That's the first thing, right? In such circumstances, an existing crime can be recorded as a hate crime, and this will be accounted for in sentencing. So it's recorded as a hate crime when the aggravator is added, and then it is influential on the sentence that somebody gets. So I'm knocked down by a chicken drumstick and the person goes, just get lost, you, you old bloater. Right. Oh, actually, because age is in it, that would count. Just say bloater. Get lost, bloater. Right. They get, the judge will go, yeah, I'm not having that. It's six months. Right. The guy that goes, smacks me on the back of the head with a KFC drumstick. And I fall down. It gets arrested because he says, puffed her. He'll get... Eight months. Do you get how it works? It shouldn't work like that. It shouldn't work like that. But it does, right? Okay, because that's the sort of the start of the hate crime nonsense. And it? Just get rid of it all. Aggravations don't, they don't seem to be causing controversy and have, for the post, most part, been mentioned only in the context of debate where it's argued that the 2021 Act mostly just keeps the law the same. The real tension is revolving around the stirring up hatred offences. It's been a crime to stir up racial hatred since 1965. The new Hate Crime Act will extend this to include religion, age, disability, sexual orientation, transgender identity and variations in sex characteristics. What for? It's just mad. 
These offences are more limited than the racial hatred one. The offence of stirring up racial hatred can be committed either intentionally or recklessly. The other offence requires an intention to stir up hatred to be proven. Additionally, there is an offence that one's conduct is reasonable in the circumstances, and there is an explicit commitment on the face of the act to interpret reasonableness with particular regard to the right to freedom of expression. Vital, our freedom of expression. In order to have freedom of expression, you must have three thought. We can't have a chilling effect. The legal standard that must be met for these crimes to be committed is high, so why have people been so worried? This is Michael asking this. The answer is a combination of misinformation and mistrust. Unfortunately, both are centred around the Scottish Government and Police Scotland. We have seen in public information campaign that has focused almost exclusively on the hurty feels, or hurt feelings, with barely a mention of freedom of expression. Somebody can report you to the police and you can get a criminal act for somebody's hurt feelings. Oh, off. Off you pop, you. <laughs> Is that hate speech? I don't know anymore. Oh, dear. Now... Uh, this, it says here, we have seen the campaign is focused on exclusive on hurt feelings and barely a mention of freedom of expression. This might be understandable if this law was being introduced where it is relatively clear what counts as threatening or abusive behaviour in the context of these new protected characteristics. We've had a law against stirring up racial hatred for decades. The problem is that the background context into which law is being introduced is one where there is profound disagreement within the public sphere over how to balance competing rights, particularly in the context of sex and gender identity. Gender identity. Then there's a quote. Misgendering or accurately sexing, depending on one's view, is either legitimate political speech or it is abusive and potentially criminal. In our current political climate, there is profound disagreement about the substance of those competing claims. And this has bled into disagreement about what counts as abusive behaviour. To some, referring to a trans person by reference to their sex and not their gender identity is harassing and abusive. To others, this is a manifestation of a legally protected philosophical belief and necessary for the protection of women's rights. Misgendering or accurately sexing, depending on one's view, is either legitimate political speech or, if abuse, or, if, or is, is abuse and potentially criminal. Against that background, one might expected the Scottish Government to have been clearer in its messaging about whether, in its view, the expression of gender-critical speech was targeted by this new Act. Indeed, the Government cannot claim ignorance of, of this. At stage two of the Bill, several amendments were put forward to explicitly state, on the face of the Act, that expressions of gender-critical views would not itself be taken to be threatening or abusive. This included an amendment proposed by the then-Justice Secretary, Humza Eustace. He then, the amendment said, behaviour or material is not to be taken to be threatening or abusive solely on the basis that involves or includes discussion or criticism of matters relating to transgender identity. This prompted a backlash from trans rights activists that was virulent enough to leave Adam Tompkins, the then Justice Committee convener, a little afraid. Yusuf quickly apologised and the amendments were pulled. And once again, we are giving supremacy to cross-dressing, knicker-fumbling LARPers and mad women who think they're men. What's going on? It's a morass. That's a good word, isn't it? Morass. It's a morass. Hate crime legislation shouldn't exist. End of. Free speech is it. End of. That's what we should be fighting for. Because the rest of it, otherwise, is we're playing by their game. Repeal the GRA, get it out of the Equality Act, and we need to amend the Equality Act as well, I think. But that's just me. You let me know what you think in the doobris. I'm sure you not doobris. Comments. I'm sure you will. Lovely to speak to you once again. Become our teacher. I'll see thee later. Go and have some fun. Bye.